All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we're really excited to get going on the Memory Blue Why Choose a Career in Tech Sales webinar. Hope everyone is staying safe and healthy, and we're really excited to dive in today. Uh, but before we begin, um, definitely want to remind you guys, if you have questions throughout, do not hesitate. There is a Q&A button you should see at the bottom of your screen. Go ahead and throw any and all questions you have in there as we go throughout the presentation today, and we will definitely be sure to tackle those at the end. All right, so just to let you know who's here in attendance today, um, I am Kristen Wisdorf. I manage client delivery and um, all client success and relationships here at Memory Blue. So what that means is I work with all 200 plus of our sales development reps who come work at Memory Blue and all of the campaigns, the clients that they work on. Uh, I have over 10 years of experience in sales, sales leadership, and sales recruiting on college campuses. And I actually um, studied sales at my college at the University of Wisconsin Eau Claire. I also have joining me today Libby Galatis, who's our campus recruiting manager here at Memory Blue. Hey, Libby. And Josh Klein, who is currently an SDR here at Memory Blue. The cool thing about Josh is he was literally in your shoes last year, considering what his career was going to look like. And he graduated from JMU and hopped right into sales. So today we're going to focus on a few things, but we really want to start with talking about the technology industry. What does tech mean? What does high tech mean? And um, how is it growing and changing and why you might want to consider it as a career choice? Then we'll talk about how to break into tech, uh, specifically what it means to be an SDR or a sales development rep, and how to jumpstart your career in entry-level sales. If you do start your career as an SDR and you, you start in entry-level sales, well, what does that mean for your career overall? And where can that career take you long-term? What are the different paths and trajectories that we typically see? So we'll cover not only the SDR role, but uh, a sales career in high tech in general. And then we will wrap up by talking a little bit about our opportunities here at Memory Blue and what we look for. And of course, answer all of your questions about sales, high tech, the SDR world, and everything in between. So let's start by talking a little bit about the high tech industry. Um, the tech industry is booming. It's ever changing. It is honestly, um, it's, it's kind of exciting because it's not going anywhere and it keeps evolving. In fact, many of you probably have noticed that just in the last year, you know, a lot of companies were forced online due to the pandemic. Um, whether that means if you're currently a student in school, the way you interact in uh, your college classes or with your professors maybe has evolved and changed with the help of technology. Um, and companies that maybe two years ago didn't really have a technology presence were forced to have a technology presence. Um, even here at Memory Blue with our clients, we're seeing um, tech companies that didn't exist a year ago. In fact, you know, one of our clients is a COVID testing technology, which is really exciting. Or we have um, clients that have had to pivot and now they have a software that helps keep people safe, either in schools or in businesses. So the really exciting thing, pandemic or not, about technology is that it is always changing. Um, it's very agile, it's constantly adapting. And um, I like to kind of call it recession resilient because the te since technology is always changing and growing, it's really not going anywhere, it's just evolving. Um, and you can actually see here that Gartner anticipates a $40 billion increase in tech revenues just by next year alone, um, which is kind of wild to think about. Some of the biggest companies in the world are technology companies and they're worth trillions of dollars. Um, but what does that mean for you? It means it's an industry that's ever evolving, which is really exciting. Uh, it's also an industry that is growing. And if you want to align yourself and your career with an industry, you probably want to look at one that is growing and um, kind of moving in that direction. The bottom line is technology is ever changing and it really impacts a lot of people's lives. So when you're considering an industry, it might make sense to consider an industry that has those qualities. So, okay, that's exciting, Kristen. Technology touches all parts of our life and it impacts so many different things that we do in that, um, you know, businesses, how businesses operate. 
well, how can I break into high tech? And the short answer is become an SDR. Um, so an SDR, it stands for sales development rep. You also might hear it called market development rep or business development rep. There's all sorts of different words for essentially the same or very similar jobs, right? So starting off as an SDR in high tech is a really great way to get the foundation that you need to have a lifelong career in technology sales. Um, just to give you a little uh, background on what an SDR does uh, or what SDRs do, SDRs are, I like to call them the catalyst, right? SDRs are responsible for starting the sales process with a technology company and potential customers, okay? So you, you may have heard in classes or throughout your life, like nothing happens until a sale is made. I heard that in my business classes uh, back in college. And I like to say, no sale is made without an SDR's involvement because really the SDR function is that first step in educating a potential customer that this your technology exists and that they could potentially purchase it. So the SDR role is all about generating leads or business opportunities by researching and educating potential customers that your technology exists and how it can make their life and their day-to-day -day better, and then moving that sales prospect along in the process, okay? So SDR's day-to-day -day job really does revolve around researching, um, prospecting, calling, having conversations, and sales nowadays is all about educating prospects um, how your technology could impact their day-to-day. So the ultimate goal of an SDR is to schedule a meeting between a qualified prospect and an account executive. So what that means is um, you're kind of like uh, starting a relay race, right? So you start the race and once that prospect's ready to go, you pass the baton off to an account executive and the sales process continues. And then as an SDR, you go found, find another potential customer, which is really exciting. Um, there's all sorts of different um, things you can do as an SDR as it relates to inbound or outbound. So inbound means you're contacting prospects who might actually be familiar with your company or at least with the technology that your company um, does or you know helps with. So these are prospects that are familiar. Maybe they've attended a webinar like this or they have... Um, They've attended an event or something like that. Maybe they were poking around on your website, right? That's a prospect who's a little bit further in the buying cycle. And that's what we would consider an inbound lead. So you would be responsible for talking to that prospect, educating them more, and again, passing the baton off to your AE when they're ready to go. Outbound sales is similar. It's just a prospect who's a little bit higher up in the sales funnel. Maybe they aren't familiar with your company or your technology, but you call them and educate them on how this technology could impact their life and their day-to-day. -day. Either way, whether you're working inbound or outbound, it's all the same kind of foundation when it comes to being an SDR. And it's all about cultivating and formulating those business opportunities which is really exciting. Okay, so if you're considering high tech and you are liking this idea of being an SDR and what the job entails, well, let's talk a little bit about what happens to SDRs and what happened recently with SDRs. So the interesting thing about being an SDR in the high tech space is that jobs actually increased in 2020. So while a lot of other industries were hit pretty hard because of the pandemic, we have found, and you can actually see here on this um, graph that the Bridge Group did, that most companies either stayed the same or hired more SDRs in 2020. Um, specifically here from Memory Blue alone, we actually hired almost 300 SDRs in 2020 alone. So exciting industry that's ever changing and a really exciting job opportunity that um, companies are really looking for and they, they wanna hire more and more SDRs which is exciting. So what does it take to be an SDR? What qualities, what types of people do companies look for? Does Memory Blue look for? Um, these are some of the uh, things that we look for here at Memory Blue, hiring our you know, nearly 300 SDRs every year. And what we believe separates the average or the good SDR from a really great exceptional SDR. 
Um, it should come as no surprise that sales can be a challenging job. And so we're looking for people who are hardworking, who are going to be proactive in finding solutions to problems and getting out there and just working really hard to, um, to make it happen. Because at the end of the day, it, at the, it's really about work ethic. We can teach you all the technology related things. So if you are a former athlete, or maybe you've never been an athlete, but you're really competitive and you're competitive with yourself, that's a great quality to have in uh, an SDR and a sales rep. And ultimately, like I said, we're going to teach you, at least at Memory Blue, everything you need to know to do the job. So you have to be coachable. You have to be excited to learn and apply what you're learning and kind of be a sponge and soak it all up. So all of those kind of adjectives we like to describe as hustle. And we're looking for hustlers at Memory Blue. And I know most uh, high tech sales um, opportunities are looking for hustlers as well. So if any of these qualities describe you, you might be asking yourself or you say, hey, Kristen, how can I become a high tech SDR? Well, I'm actually going to pass it over to Libby Galatis, who's our campus recruiting manager. She is part of the reason we were able to hire almost 300 people last year. Talk a little bit about the SDR role here at Memory Blue. Perfect. Thank you so much, Kristen. Um, so the technology part of tech sales can sound a little bit intimidating. Um, a lot of students that I speak with are really concerned about either their lack of experience in general within the workforce um, and the fact that they probably don't consider themselves to be very technical. Um, so a lot of people just don't realize that you don't have to be technical to sell technology um, with the right training, like Kristen mentioned earlier, you can develop the skills that you need to become successful in this industry. Um, it, it truly is more about those intangible qualities. So again, you don't have to have sales experience to do well in an entry level role like this, and you don't have to be technical or have te a technology background to be successful in tech sales. Um, what's truly more important are the qualities that Kristen mentioned earlier. Um, and as a recent college graduate, I, although you guys don't have a ton of experience coming out of school, you're actually more likely to enter the workforce with enthusiasm. You're more likely to be coachable than your experienced peers. And it makes sense. You know, you guys are coming out of um, classes where you're in learning mode, classroom style setting, where you're, you're sponges taking in all this information. And, and your first role out of school, you're going to be learning a lot. And it's important to have those kind of sponge like attributes um, and that coachability is key. So overall, if you have the right intangible qualities, even if you don't have direct work experience in sales or in tech, um, at a company that offers a solid training program and great coaching, you'll be able to develop the skills that you need to become a successful salesperson. So moving on to the next slide. Um, entry level sales, like Kristen just mentioned, it is extremely challenging. It pushes our representatives out of their comfort zones. You're learning from the ground up, something that you don't know how to do and that you haven't quite mastered yet. Um, and unfortunately, there's not a cookie cutter, one size fits all sales approach that works for everybody. Um, the way that I'm projecting myself to you guys right now, for example, and the way that Kristen is projecting herself throughout this webinar, that's something that we develop through trial and error over time. And it's, it takes time to get there. So uh, for companies that are hiring for those SDR type positions, it's really important to have a, a strong training pro program um, to help its new hires master the skill from the ground up. At Memory Blue specifically, we actually put all of our new hires through our world-class Memory Blue Academy. Um, it's ran by two different facilitators and it's a six week structured onboarding process to, um, that starts with two days of boot camp, and we actually begin our sales reps on a journey with a cohort of representatives that grow with them at the same pace as them throughout that six week time frame. So during that process, you're able to familiarize, your, familiarize yourself with expectations um, and kind of grow over time again through that trial and error process with a team of people that are experiencing that with you. Um, and with the approach that you end up establishing, I mean, I'm in a recruiting role now and Kristen's in sales management, beginning in sales, all the skills that we built in those positions apply in the roles that we're in today. So you'll be able to utilize that foundation in later parts of your career as well. Um, which transitions into, you know, where can I go starting off in an entry level sales position like this? Am I stuck in sales if I decide, you know, seven, eight months, a year into my career that sales isn't for me? Um, and, and that's a great question. I mean, if you're looking at any entry level position, regardless of the industry you pursue uh, coming out of school or as your first job in a new space, you should be really curious about the different career growth opportunities from that initial position. Um, and at Memory Blue, we actually offer a variety of different career paths. 
And every single rep that works with us starts off as an SDR. That's where I began my career. That's where Josh started off his career here as well. And it's the role that Kristen kind of broke down for us a, a few slides ago. So between their first day on the job as an SDR and their 15th month on the job, um, our reps are able to pursue a variety of different career paths, both inside of the company and outside of the company. So um, in general, entry-level roles are not designed to be forever positions. So we want our representatives to tackle the next step of their career once they master that initial sales foundation, um, even if it does lead them outside of the company to pursue work with our clients or uh, taking that next level outside of the firm as well. So if you check out our Instagram at Memory Blue Sales, you'll see dozens of posts that are highlighting when our reps accept these offers to go work for their clients, transition out of the company. And that's something that we do encourage and celebrate. So with that said, um, in this, this role, talking about the challenges, talking about what you're going to have to do in order to master the skill and overcome over time, um, this is definitely a role that you're going to want to be able to blow off steam with. Um, jobs like this and companies that offer roles like this should have an extremely strong culture and an office environment that makes you want to come to work and enjoy the role as much as you possibly can. So at Memory Blue, we have monthly cultural events and our top performers, they're given the opportunity to win a seat on our company paid tropical vacation that we take twice a, twice a year. That's our top strip. And these, in addition to other standout events, are part of the reason why Memory Blue has won um, awards. We were ranked number one in company culture by the American Association of Inside Sales Professionals because that in office and, and kind of interpersonal experience that you have with your peers here is so important to us. So um, that's something that you guys should all consider and really ask about, especially in COVID times, how companies are preserving their culture when things are virtual, because uh, it's important. And um, with that said, I, I think that most of you probably haven't been exposed too much to what the you know, actual role entails and what sales calls sort of sound like. So to shed some light and kind of give you guys an idea of what you can expect out of a job like this, um, I want to kind of highlight one of the biggest fears that most reps have starting off a role like this, which is rejection. Um, and the biggest way a person or prospect can reject you is by not being willing to speak with you. So I have one call to share with you guys. We'll listen to it together and then we'll talk about what happened. Mike Weiger. Mike, this is Steve Manalakis calling from Inky Technology. Am I catch you at a bad time here? So Mike did not even give Steve the time of day. He barely got to introduce himself before he was hung up on. This is a worst case scenario in a job like this, being rejected, being hung up on. Um, most sales reps wouldn't go the extra mile and seek out opportunity where it seems like it doesn't exist. This guy obviously wasn't willing to talk to Steve in that moment. But he takes a different approach to seeking out an opportunity where most probably wouldn't see it. So um, play the second call and his decision to actually call Mike back and, and see how that call went. Mike Wydra. Hey, Mike, this is Steve Manalock is calling from AK. I think we got disconnected there. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. The reason I'm reaching out. You know, I'm catching out of the blue here. I see you oversee cybersecurity there at AMG. Uh, we've been helping others in the financial space better protect against phishing attacks by sitting in line with your current SCG. Just curious how you guys are currently adapting your anti-phishing program to keep up more modern and sophisticated threat. Uh, I mean, we have a... So we're not going to play the full call for you because it goes on for minutes, but um, basically... What we're trying to prove and kind of show you guys is that with the right training and coaching and the ideal work environment, you'll be able to build the confidence that you need to create this kind of opportunity that the average sales rep would actually fall short. Um, Steve was able to call that guy back immediately knowing he was by his phone, have the confidence necessary to go that extra mile. And as a result, this call actually went to next steps and he was able to successfully book a meeting, a current meeting and move forward with that prospect into the sales process for his client. So, um, yeah, I mean, the key here is just kind of looking for the right opportunity that offers the right kind of things that you're looking for in order to make yourself most successful. And I think that training and culture and the stuff that we were able to cover today really uh, hones in on what those important qualities should be. Awesome. Thank you so much, Libby. Uh, it's always exciting to hear a real call and it kind of debunks some of the maybe fear or um, unknowns about being in sales. So 
Um, that's what we have for you as it relates to the slides, but we want to spend some time answering your questions about sales, being an SDR, high tech, memory blue, et cetera. We already have a good amount of questions in here. So uh, if you have any, go ahead and use the Q&A feature on uh, Zoom here, pop some questions in and we will get started. So let's see here. I'm going to pass it off to a lot of different folks here and Libby and Josh can help us answer some of these questions. Um, all right, so let's start with this question. Libby, when is the best time to apply or look for positions that open up during the summer? That is a great question. And we actually begin our recruiting season as soon as fall semester starts. So when you step on campus or you start your classes virtually over Zoom come fall, um, that's when we start recruiting. And, and we work with you through your process, help you kind of define what the best opportunity is. And if it ends up being memory blue, We'd love to bring you on board, you know, sooner than later. So as soon as you're ready, that's kind of when we're ready as well. Yeah, totally. If you're looking and you're excited for a job, we're excited to talk to you. And I know a lot of companies uh, are the same way. So the early bird really gets the worm. Um, Josh, this is a great question, I think, for you to answer um, since you're in the SDR role right now. Do SDRs only call or do they email too? Thanks, Kristen. Uh, really quickly, I'm Josh Klein. Uh, been at Memory Blue for about eight months now. I graduated from James Madison University 2020. As Kristen mentioned earlier, was in your shoes about a year ago. So I understand the challenges of navigating the job search, uh, especially during a pandemic. Um, so I know it's not easy. So for the outreach that you do as an SDR, it's really, um, I'd say three main avenues. You do call, um, you know, and like this varies person to person as well. Some people find more success and calling than others do on email, et cetera, but calling, emailing, as well as using LinkedIn for outreach, which has really been a successful tool um, given people being remote and being at home. So basically use those three avenues um, and kind of use the, I guess, a, a try head approach to kind of make sure that your outreach, you know, is, is the best that it can be and make sure you get in contact with the person that you're aiming for. Yeah, that's a great point, Josh. It's all about having kind of like this multi-touch cadence and getting in front of prospects. Everybody operates a little differently. Some people who might be phone talkers are texters. And so we create, and this is all part of the training program here at Memory Blue, we create a cadence or a sales prospecting um, essentially playbook that uh, gets in front of prospects in all the different ways that they like to be reached out to. So good, thank you, Josh. Um, let's see, next question. Um, what is a typical day like at Memory Blue? Um, do you work 40 hours a week? Do you work more? Do you work less? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start with Josh and then I think Libby can answer that question as well. So a, I guess a typical day looks like, um, usually in the morning you have a period where you're, where you're making calls, um, reaching out to prospects, you know, trying to educate them on what your product or service is. And then you have, um, a time during the middle of the day that's dedicated to training or building out prospects, targets, really whatever you need to take care of to, you know, best complete your outreach. And then you end the day as well um, with another call period. So it's kind of a three, I guess, separated three different segments. Um, in terms of working more than 40 hours a week, I, I think that really just depends on the person as well as, you know, kind of what you know, you're, you're looking to accomplish and kind of how you're, how you're tracking and how you're doing. Because I know people who are only in there from when they're supposed to be in there are never even over 40 hours a week and they always get done what they need to get done and they're consistently crushing it. And then I also know people who have to stay a little bit longer, maybe coming a little bit earlier to get done what they need to do. So it's very dependent on the type of person that you are, as well as, you know, kind of where you are in the month in terms of how you're looking for your quota, et cetera. Just to add to that, um, and that was a great answer, Josh, and sales is a very unique industry. It's a very unique kind of job because the amount of work that you put in and the effort that you kind of put forth is directly correlated to how much money you make and the incentives that you end up earning. That's why a lot of sales roles you'll see have a base salary plus a bonus structure, some sort of commission structure attached to it as well to make additional pay. Um, with that said, what we find is our representatives, um, to Josh's point, you kind of have to find your own operating rhythm. What needs to happen during the work days in order for you to accomplish your goals and be on target to hit quota. Um, there might be weeks where the third week of the month, you need to stay late a couple hours just to be able to cover your bases and make sure that you're on target to hit quota. This is um, this is a job that is, it's a grind. It's, it requires hustle and um, it, as challenging as it is, it's extremely rewarding. 
So there's not like a mandatory number of hours, um, you know, that you are expected. We don't expect our representatives to work over 40, but um, obviously it's it's something that if you feel that helps you and that's going to set you up for your goals, um, that's something that we encourage. So that's a good point, Libby. And this actually leads to a couple um, different questions we have in here about how SDRs are paid. Is there a base? Is training paid? Things like that. So. I actually love these questions because if you're interested in a sales role, it is a-okay to talk about money. <laughs> um, it's a good thing, actually. So um, I'll go ahead and start that. And then Libby, if you want to jump in and answer anything. Yes, SDRs are paid. They're definitely paid here at Memory Blue with, um, as Libby mentioned, base plus bonus. Um, we actually have a really cool, um, we call it our base salary ladder, where you can actually increase your base salary every single month at Memory Blue and then earn bonuses, which are similar to commissions on top of it. Um, but compensation isn't just base and bonuses. You also want to think long-term about what are you doing to set yourself up for compensation two years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now. And then you also want to look when you're looking at sales opportunities, what the non-money related compensation are as well. So um, Libby briefly went over it, but we have, um, once you hit one year of Memory Blue, you get a $3,000 trip to anywhere in the world you want to go to. We've had people go to Africa, Hawaii, Italy, the Super Bowl. I mean, the list goes on and on. We've had people bring their parents on trips. And so $3,000, wherever you want to go. We also have, in addition to that, two trips a year um, called our TOPS trip. Think about it as like a President's Club trip and um, different incentives throughout the year as well. Libby, is there anything you'd add as it relates to how SDRs are paid here at Memory Blue? I think the biggest thing is just to um, really push the fact that this job is meant to be transitional. It's meant to offer a stepping stone or a launching pad to the reps that begin their journey with us. Um, most reps that start with us have the intention of selling technology long term. But as we talked about a little bit earlier in the webinar today, there's other avenues for growth and development within the company outside of sales that they can pursue from that role. So the SDR position, that initial salary, um, and we've talked about this in a couple of the podcasts that Kristen and I co-host, if you guys wanted to check out the Memory Blue podcast. Um, and I just, I think that with a role like this, it's less about the base pay initially, the OTE of that first year, and more about, like Kristen mentioned earlier, year two, year three, and setting yourself up for that long-term success versus being so focused on the now. Um, but that's kind of what I would add to that. Yeah, totally. And we have another question here kind of going off of that, which is, is training paid? Um, and the short answer is yes, training is paid. In fact, here at Memory Blue specifically, um, training uh, starts obviously right away, but you also can start earning bonuses right away. So not only is training paid, but you can start earning your bonuses and commissions. There's no waiting period or anything like that, which is pretty exciting. Um, and uh, the next question we have here is, do you have company competitions? Oh, this is a good one. Um, obviously, one of the adjectives that I put up earlier is competitive. And competitive can mean a lot of things for a lot of different people. It can mean I was an athlete or I was a, you know, a musician and I or I was just competitive with myself. Um, competitive is a great adjective because it doesn't mean you have to be a former athlete to be competitive and be good at this job. And so we absolutely lean into that and we hire competitive people. So we do different competitions throughout the year. In fact, just a couple of days ago, we announced our 2021 March Madness competition. It officially starts on Monday on March 1st and it will run for nine weeks and every single person in the company gets to participate. Um, and we're giving away about $5,000 worth of prizes and winnings and we'll have a bunch of different winners and we have a bracket and everything and every office it's shared on the screens or if you're working from home, it's um, shared on um, your desktop or sending out the messages every single day. So that's one example. That's kind of an individual competition. We also do team-based competitions. So everybody who starts here at Memory Blue gets assigned to a team and that you work with that team and that manager um, throughout your tenure. And so we do a lot of team-based competitions as well. Um, Josh, Libby, did you have anything to add as it relates to the different competitions you've experienced as SDRs here? 
Um, I think with with this role, to your point, we we hire competitive people. We talked about how challenging the job is, and a huge piece of the culture is playing into that competitive nature of our hires by gamifying everything that we possibly can, um, making it a little bit of a competition. Can you know you hear cold calling and and your eyes roll back in the head uh, just because you're not interested in doing that, but. When you add a uh, competition to it, you can make it a little bit more fun and try and, and enjoy it a bit more. So um, you covered a lot of really great ones, Kristen. I know we have bigger base competitions. There, there's individually based competitions that you can set up in the moment, day by day as well. Um, so we do play into that gamifying aspect of the role to try and make it as enjoyable as possible. If you had anything to add, Josh. Yeah, so sorry if I can't contain my excitement. I'm super excited for our March Madness competition. I've been chomping at the bit for that one. Um, but another like great thing as well is, as they mentioned, you have individual company-wide team competitions. Um, one thing that I've always loved too is not when in the actual office, they have screens that come up like say, Josh Klein just booked a meeting. So if you have say a competition within your team and you know the person sitting next to you looks up at that screen and they see that you booked me and they're like, all right, I gotta hit this harder. I don't want Josh beating me in this competition. So I think competitions are an inherent part of Memory Blue and it, it definitely makes it you know, more fun and, and more enjoyable when you're you know, just doing the day-to-day -day of your job. Totally. Um... All right, we've got some more questions here. I wanna to get to as many as possible. Um, oh, here's a great one from Michael. Um, are sales calls scripted in any way or do SDRs form their own proposals or presentations? Josh, why don't you go ahead and take this one because you're in the job right now. Yeah, so I think it's a little bit um, of both in that answer. So you work with your client as well as your uh, delivery manager to, to make a document that you know has the most relevant information that you want to make sure that you hit on every single time. However, that document, you know, it's not a script. We don't call it a script. It's a late, it's a living, breathing document. You know, it changes all the time. You know, if I've made a few calls and I've had ex good experiences with using certain things and not so great using other ones, you change it as you go along. And one of the great things about this job is you could have two people doing the same thing and they're 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 not using the same script. They're using different words, verbiage, um, or talking about different things. And, you know, the goal is to, to get to a point where you don't even really need that, that document, right. Where you become an expert in what you're talking about and you, you really don't need that. So I think it's a little bit of both. I think you might rely on it a little more when you first start, but, um, definitely not a script and it's, you know, based on your personality and your, your style. Yeah, that's such a good point, Josh. We actually, we have an internal word, we call it sheet music because it's kind of like, um, different musicians playing the same piece of music, they make it their own. And so we really lean into that. We have a formula for success. We know what does work. We've been doing this for nearly 20 years. Um, so everyone comes in and does learn that formula, but we want you to inject your kind of your X factor, your charisma, your personality into it. And obviously um, it's something that is living and breathing and it changes as you go. Uh, but the good thing about our training is it's, um, I like to call it technology agnostic. So we're teaching you how to sell and build a career around selling and use that in your everyday life. We're not specifically training you on one technology. That way, as you evolve in your career and you try different technologies or you work for you know, different tech companies, you can apply the foundation that Memory Blue trains on, which is really exciting. Um, what surprised you the most when you began your, uh, began your role about your role and the company? Um, so Libby, I'm going to go ahead and start with you and then we can circle back to Josh. Um, so what surprised you the most about being an SDR? So I, I was pretty athletic, um, in high school. I went to college, I played intramural sports. Um, I did pretty well in school. I picked up on a lot of, of things in my life pretty easily, not to toot my own horn, but, um, you know, I came across a sales position and my aunt is in tech sales and she's the one that got me interested in the industry. I went through the interview process and I thought I would just hit the ground running and find success out of the gate because that's how most of my life had panned out up until that point. Um, this job is extremely humbling. And I think that most people kind of go through that process when they first begin. If you think about the best salespeople out there in, in the world that are absolutely crushing it, making hundreds of thousands of dollars, they had to make their first cold call at one point in their career. And it probably sounded absolutely terrible. Um, so that was really surprising to me, just kind of understanding the process involved with establishing the skill. Um, expecting to find success out of the gate wasn't realistic for me. There's always outliers to that. Some people start day 
day one and they just kind of figure it out really quickly. Um, I took some more time and, and leaned on my mentor and my team and my manager a lot uh, in order to find my feet in the position. So that was most surprising to me, just kind of the, the general challenge involved with it. Um, and and then learning how to grind the adjustment to nine to five coming out of student life where you can spend an hour in class and then have four hours off and then have another class for like two hours. The real world's just not like that. So those would be the biggest surprises that I personally experienced. Um, but I'll toss it to you, Josh, if you found anything surprising about your experience so far. Yeah, I will say the biggest thing that surprised me when I first started was the amount of impact I could have with people um, you know, at some very large organizations, people who were CEOs, CIOs, VPs of, you know, technology infrastructure, where, you know, coming out of college, you think my first role, you know, you, you don't really think that, hey, I'm going to be talking on the phone with this chief information officer at this large company for 10, 15 minutes. I'm going to set up a time with him. We're going to go through something, you know, it, it, and I've, I've had this happen to me where it ends up being a deal that closes for your client. And I think that was one of the things that surprised me the most was the amount of impact that I could have just by, you know, working really hard and doing my job correctly and using all the tools that Memory Blue provides you. That's a good point. Um, the cool thing is, is, you know, like Libby said earlier, you don't have to have a specific background. We'll teach you everything, but everybody's own experiences will kind of impact, um, what they take out of the role, but ultimately will prepare you for a long-term career in sales or in a sales adjacent role. Um, so obviously makes sense, but we're getting a lot of questions here about working remote and being an SDR in the time of COVID. And so a um, couple questions here. Do Memory Blue employees currently work virtually or in an office? Um, so I'll go ahead and answer that one. We do both. Um, depending on, we have six offices all across the country. Depending on where the office is, is how we are tackling it. So we're obviously going by local ordinances. Um, you can see Libby and Josh are at home right now. And I would say a majority of our SDRs are still working at home. That said, in the areas where we're able to do it safely, we uh, are able to go into the office on a scheduled um essentially like safe process so that people can have that in-office experience. I myself, I'm in my office right now, got my old mask with me. Um, and so it's, we're doing a little bit of both. We're really excited for the day that we could a hundred percent be back in the office. Um, but we do have a lot of, you know, very specific culture related things that we have always done here at Memory Blue. So when we did transition to remote, we were able to kind of not skip a beat, I would say. Um, you still have your team huddles every single day. They're just virtual now. And your manager is still working with you and being able to live call coach you. And um, we still do culture events. They just happen to be and, and look different than they used to. So um, it's important when you consider you know, the pandemic not going away anytime soon when you do get into a new job. Well, what's it going to be like if I am working from home and, um, and how has that company pivoted and kind of changed things up? So I still get the support and the environment that maybe I, you know, that's different than it was two years ago. So um, we will continue to work remote for the foreseeable future and stay and keep our SDRs and our team as safe as possible. But um, I know everybody's kind of chomping at the bit for us to be able to go back to the office when we're able to. Um, let's see, uh, I have another question here. Oh, are there any outside resources any of you would recommend we look into in order to develop and further enhance our sales skills? That's a really good question. I've got a couple books I might recommend, but Josh, do you have anything that you've done outside of your memory blue training that you'd recommend? Yeah. So I also, I'm not the best at sitting down reading books. So I listen to a lot of books on audible. Um, you know, I have a couple in, in mind, the sales development playbook is a great one um, as well as some others. But one thing I think um, given kind of the amount of information we have on our, at our fingertips is I join a lot of groups on LinkedIn. So, you know, groups of inside sales professionals, other SDRs, um, and, you know, you don't even have to be an SDR to join these groups, but you have a lot of successful people in there who are, you know, sharing their tips, you know, kind of tricks of the trade successes that they've had. So I think kind of getting around like-minded people who have done the role and been successful in it is, is definitely a great place to start. Yeah, that's great. Um, Libby, what is the best advice you could give someone who really wants to impress in a job interview for an SDR position? 
That's a great question. Um, and we talked a little bit about this, I mean, throughout this entire webinar, the importance of the intangible qualities in comparison to direct applicable work experience when you're interviewing for roles like this. Um, it, and what that means is you don't have to have inside sales experience to do an inside sales entry level position. Um, with that said, we do want to know with confidence that those intangible qualities are there. Um, I think a lot of you would be surprised how much your side summer jobs and the roles that you've been doing in your free time, things to keep busy and um, prove that you can time manage and juggle. Um, with COVID, you know, things have gotten a little bit more challenging with, um, you know, being part of sororities and fraternities, but there's a lot of skills that you're building in those experiences, in those groups, in those um, social circles that you guys are part of, in addition to those side jobs that you're doing that would apply. And I think being able to showcase and talk to your work ethic based off of your past experience um, and talk to those intangible qualities and, and walk through experiences that you've had where you had to receive feedback that you took, applied, and improved from. Those are the kinds of things that our sales managers really look for, um, that coachability piece, that hardworking, that drive, and being able to kind of highlight personal experience, professional experiences, school experiences that you've had that kind of point to those qualities. That's what I would say um, is the biggest piece of advice that I can share, and including being incredibly curious in any sales position, in any interview process that you're part of ask questions. Um, being curious shows investment, it shows interest, and that's two things that you definitely want your hiring managers and recruiters to be able to receive too. Totally. And Libby, um, real quick, is Memory Blue currently hiring? Memory Blue is always hiring. Uh, <laughs> if you go to our website, we have job postings under the careers page. Um, we also have additional resources. Our website has a ton of really, really great information from blog posts that current sales reps wrote themselves about their experience. Um, we've had introverts talk about what made them really successful in the position when you typically think and see extroverts thrive in sales-like environments. Um, if you're just looking to educate yourself more, the website, the job postings, it gives us uh, so many more details on the role and in industry. Um, so you can absolutely apply online um, as well as our LinkedIn job postings. We're on Handshake. We probably have a job posted at your school. So um, yes, long story short, we are hiring, actively hiring all throughout the school year and then all throughout the calendar year. Yeah, we are, as Libby said, we're always hiring. That means if you are in a totally different industry and you're looking to break into high tech sales, we're hiring. We'll have a chat with you um, and we're hiring people now. We're also, if you're a student and you won't graduate until May or August or even next year, we're hiring for then as well. So like I said earlier, the early bird gets the worm. Um, we're hiring all people with all backgrounds for our sales positions. And if you are interested in speaking with a recruiter directly, well, the first thing you can do is absolutely apply on our website. The second thing is Libby is actually heads up our campus recruiting team specifically. So if there's a, a recruiter you wanna reach out to, she would be your gal and you can connect with her on LinkedIn and start the conversation there. All right, um, let's see. Is there a difference in significance for SDRs, whether or not the executives close the sale or not? Oh, that's a great question. So at Memory Blue, if you're working with your client, um, what, how does it impact an SDR's day-to-day -day if their client closes the sales leads you send them or not? Josh, do you want to go ahead and take this one? Yeah, so at Memory Blue, um, you know, being in that SDR, that initial outreach role, you are, your job is to set those meetings and that's how you're evaluated. That's, you know, kind of what your pay structure is based on. I saw another question in there um, around that as well. So it is once that meeting is given and that opportunity is given into the executive's hands, there may be some outreach or some touch points that you might still help them with. But at, at that point, it's no longer, I guess, um, on you if that ends up closing or not. Obviously, you know, the better opportunities that you can bring to them and the more that, you know, that do end up closing the better, but that's not directly how you're evaluated at Memory Blue. Great. Thanks, Josh. All right. How are you measured? Is it based off of the number of calls you make or contacts you get on the phone or meetings you set up? That's a great question. Um, I'll go ahead and start with that. And then um, Libby can add in any color if she has anything. So at Memory Blue, you're measured. We measure everything because that's just what sales is all about. And whether you're at Memory Blue or you're at another company, um, typically sales folks get measured. Um, so we measure everything because we want to know how we can help you. Um, we measure the number of dials you make, how many conversations you get into, how many emails you sent, how many emails were opened and which prospects responded and how did they respond and 
Um, of course, how many meetings did you set for your client and get passed on? And, um, and how many of those meetings, how did they go? Were they good or not? So ultimately, ultimately at Memory Blue and in any sales position, you want to focus on what you can control. And so that's how we specifically um, compensate our SDRs is based on what they can control, um, which is hitting their quota, not necessarily what happens once they pass that lead over to their client. Um, while we measure how many dials you make, you're not compensated based on how many dials you make. So, um, so we measure everything. Um, all of our SDRs, they're they can at any time look at their metrics and say, hmm, I noticed I'm making more dials last week, but I'm not getting into contact with more people. What's going on there? And then you and your mentor and your manager can sit down together and say, okay, let's look at this ratio and let's figure out what we can do in our day to day and what levers we can pull to have a, a successful week and to impact that. So, um, that, so we measure everything um, so that we can coach based on everything because that's one thing that we do at Memory Blue is you're getting constant coaching and guidance with your delivery manager. And then um, of course we have bonuses and commissions when you hit your goal as well. Um, let's see here. Just, we'll just ask, get a couple more questions before we wrap up. Are you only looking for graduates? Uh, Libby, why don't you go ahead and take that one for us? Um, no, so we are, we've highlighted a lot of, um, you know, recent, we've, we've honed in on recent graduate experience and entry level first job, things like that. Um, but we welcome and encourage individuals that started their careers in different industries that are looking to make a switch and take that first step into the technology sales space. So you do not have to be a recent graduate to work with Memory Blue. We're not exclusively hiring students. Um, I would say a, a lot of our recruits end up coming right out of school, but it is, it, I mean, we hire throughout the entire year. Um, when reps transition out of the role and when they get hired by their client, we have to fill those seats. When new clients come on board, we're actively looking to bring on new talent. So that's a constant within the company for either recent graduates pre-hiring for before graduating, juniors that are looking for internships or individuals that are in the workforce now looking to make that career switch and start here to kind of move into something different. Yeah, that's a great point, Libby. And I have another question just to kind of tack on to that. Um, what about opportunities for older students or people with varied prior experience who want to engage in a career pivot? That's a great question too. And this, this role is incredibly user-friendly. The way that the business model is structured, it's, it's, an, it's a job that's designed to be grown out of. And most of our reps are seeing some sort of career progression between six to eight months after they begin day one. Um, I myself got promoted over the recruiting team around seven months. Um, so that's kind of the general time frame that you can expect. This is the type of role that you have to do and get experience in if you want to work in the tech industry. And the perks of Memory Blue is it provides you with the breathing time and room that you need to not only hone in and establish the skill, but also feel out a variety of different technology solutions. Um, you might be dead set 100% certain that you're looking to do tech sales long term and then come to the realization after getting some experience that you want to pivot into something different. This role offers that flexibility because the foundation is so transferable. So I would say um, those that are older, those that are making career switches later on in their career, this is still an, an incredibly appealing opportunity because it just offers a point A for you to begin that switch. And that point B is a, a continuous question mark that once you define your manager is there to support and help you and the company has your back in order to help you with that transition. Um, that's a great question though. Yeah. And then um, we'll wrap up. I'll answer any of the questions we didn't get to in the chat feature um, as well. And just so you guys know, this is um, the recording is going to be saved on our website and posted on all of our, all of our socials. So um, if there was a question that we got to and you kind of missed the answer, everything will be posted so you'll be able to reference it. Um, let's see. Um, Josh, can you talk to us a little bit about training? Is it only six weeks? Does training and coaching and mentoring end? What does that look like at Memory Blue? Yeah, so training never, ever ends at Memory Blue. I think something that we, we kind of all can agree on is you can always get better. And so after that initial, you know, two days of boot camp, then you go through the six weeks of foundations. Um, basically, for the rest of your time, you have training. So we have weekly training as a whole company. Um, you have weekly call evaluations and breakdowns with just your team. You have one-on-one -on -one weekly meetings with your manager to go through um, issues. You have a mentor. 
um, who you have weekly one-on-ones with as well to kind of go through, go through things that you may be struggling with, um, do extra call breakdowns. Really, there's as much training and co- mentoring and coaching at Memory Blue as you want. So I, I think it really never ends. And it's something that I think is one of the greatest things about working at Memory Blue is that you're continuously trying to get better and everyone wants to help you get to the point that you want to be at. That's a great point. And then we will wrap up um, with, is there a certain amount of our requirement for amount of cold calls per day or week, or is it measured off of the number you are able to make on your own? So um, Libby, why don't you go ahead and take this one? How are, we talked a little bit about how SDRs are measured, but is there a certain requirement for number of calls per day? Um, long story short, yes, there is. We have an expectation for all of our representatives day one at, during their time as an SDR, there are certain daily expectations that you have to hit or your KPIs, your key performance indicators. Um, those numbers, the number of dials that you're making, conversations that you're getting into, tell a story um, and help us define and pinpoint issues or struggles that you're experiencing and how to solve those problems in order to make you more successful. Um, to Kristen's point earlier, we've got this process down to a science. If you commit to the daily metrics, you're, nest, you're um, almost guaranteed to hit your goals by the end of the month with the support system of your management and um, your mentor. So that um, expectation is actually 100 calls a day, which at face value might sound extremely off-putting. Um, I think it's also important to note that you're not sitting at your desk for eight hours and dialing um, continuously throughout each afternoon. We have um, resources and software in place that automatically calls through your list for you. We have wireless headsets that are really nice. They're noise canceling and you can walk away from your desk, bounce tennis balls on the ground. People are um, you know, moving around and, and it's important to be able to have that mobility um, and flexibility too. We have standing desks. So you're not just sitting at your desk hunched over making those calls either. So with all of these resources and tools, it's just a matter of clicking a button to have those kind of conversations and get down and achieve the goals and expectations that you have daily. Um, but yes, there is that expectation for number of calls per day. Um, and to Kristen's point earlier, that's not necessarily correlated to your pay. The results are what ultimately turn around bonuses and, and things like that. But those daily KPIs are, ex- are expected across the board from all of our SDRs. Thank you so much, Libby. Well, we are nearing the end of our time today. Thank you so much to Um, To everyone who participated and asked questions, we did um, type some answers rather than um, answer them live. So those will show up in the Q&A if you want to poke in there. Um, And of course, like I said, we are um, going to send out the recording for the webinar. So if you want to reference later, share with some friends, absolutely feel free to do that. It'll be posted on all of our social media. Um, Our Instagram is Memory Blue Sales and then our LinkedIn and our website as well. If you happen to be interested or you know someone else who is and you want to learn more about the SDR role here at Memory Blue, like uh, Libby mentioned earlier, we are hiring in all six of our offices at all times um, all over the country. Uh, So go ahead and apply on our website. You're also welcome to connect with us on LinkedIn and reach out that way. We really appreciate everyone joining us today and hopefully you learned a little bit about